just a hack. It's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. South Dakota State has done it. 23-3 to in fairly dominant fashion. The Jackrabbits win back-to-back national titles. I'm Joe DeLeon here with my former roommate and teammate from the University of Rhode Island, and we are going to be recapping the FCS National Championship on what has been a fantastic season. A lot of really unexpected outcomes. Montana goes on an incredible run and just falls short against one of the best teams that we have ever seen at the FCS level. We're going to get to that really soon, though. Before we do, though, Sean, can you just share with our listeners really quickly where they could bet during the offseason so they can fill the void of now the fact that we don't have any more FCS football to watch? Yeah, if you placed your bets this weekend on either the Jackrabbits or the Grizz, we are hoping that you did it at Bet Online, the premier betting website for us at Hack City. NFL getting into the playoffs, made some money today there. Uh, bet against Atlanta the Falcons. and bet against. Oh, you you Carolina. bet against Atlanta. Oh, wow. yeah, I bet against them because I knew how it was going to go. When so I was, why were I was, you so pissy when we got in here? I didn't get good enough odds. That's why. <laughs> Bet online does give you the best odds, though. <laughs> Head there today to get in on the action. Remember to use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V to receive your fifty percent welcome bonus in your first de- first deposit. Bet on a game and then yell at your coach for crying after getting a, a late second touchdown. You know that that that's kind of how my Sunday went. I kind of respect good. Arthur Smith for going after him because he knows he's getting fired and he's pissed at Dennis Allen for making him look worse than it when he needed to be. Uh, we don't need to. I don't. We don't need to dive down that. <laughs> uh all right let's get into talking about this uh and talking about this game sean this was it felt God, i don't even know how to really describe how this game felt it was really quick which i tweeted about how strangely fast this was it was barely three hours and 10 minutes which does not feel right for a national championship game you would have expected it would have gotten drawn out that does not happen a couple of quick stats just to throw out there clifton mcdowell goes uh, 22 for 39 for 165 yards, no touchdowns, and an interception. Nick Osmo is the leading rusher, six carries, 18 yards, 3.0 yards per carry. Uh, on the other side, Isaiah Davis, 16 for 87, one touchdown. Gronowski, 13 for 21, 175, a touchdown, and a pick. This game was as dominant as it looked. And it started out early where Montana was playing them close. But I think a lot of fans of South Dakota State and those that have been following South Dakota State kind of knew that they were playing a little slow. They were getting a little slow to start. They were playing a little sloppy. They had a really nice early drive that put them into a very quick scoring position, put themselves on the board. But then there was the the pick that they threw. There was the muffed punt off of one of the shortest, choppiest punts that I've ever seen by an FCS punter. Um couple of just silly mistakes made this game really close close at halftime, but you could kind of tell going into the second half that South Dakota State, having been in these situations before, was going to lock in and get themselves ready to turn around and come out swinging to put themselves in a position to pretty handedly win this game. This game did feel different. Uh, You didn't know how to describe it because – how do you describe a national championship game that felt like a regular season game for South Dakota state? That's if you didn't watch the games, that's what it looked like all year. And they didn't miss a beat. And I'm going to let everybody know early on in the show. I took no joy in seeing Montana lose no matter how much the fans have hounded me. I wanted to see a good, fair, hard hitting football game. And I got some of that. So I'm not reveling in the fact that Montana lost by 20. I'm not reveling in the fact that I said they were going to cover and they didn't. There, there, there's there's it's just straight up that's what South Dakota State did all season and they did it again in the championship game they didn't do anything weird they didn't do anything goofy they had some some football you know uh, just physical stuff throwing a pick that's a football physical error right it was just so tight on defense that you know you knew something was going to have to break eventually you knew it was going to break eventually and it did it did and it fell in favor of South Dakota State. Montana played great defense for a half. They did. South Dakota State is that team that will just grind you down over four quarters, and you got to see it. And it's a painful loss, too. It's painful yeah. and because you just are suffocated 
and they will continue to churn out their points. You play on their tempo. You played on their tempo all season. They dictated the rules. They dictated the games, and they won it all. Incredibly impressive to see a group of 100 dudes and some coaches come together and make that happen. Montana, complete resurgence in the second half. Uh, uh, amazing uh, catching fire through the playoffs gave us some fantastic games, but unfortunately the championship came as we predicted it. It would South Dakota state plays their ball game. Montana had to catch up and they didn't get enough luck. That, that's what one to, before we get back to like actually talking about this game and like breaking it down that that's one thing that I, I know that there's this assumption by Montana fans that think that we hate them. There was a couple weeks stretch where I was really loathing them by the thoughts in the, in the comments that we were receiving uh, from Montana fans. But I mean, like during this playoff stretch, you could still know and could tell that they had the edge in these playoff games, that they were going to win these playoff games and they went on a fantastic run any other year. They probably can win it. You know, they, they could probably play a much, a much closer game. At the end of the day, they were facing off again. I said at the beginning of the show, one of the greatest FCS teams that we've ever seen. This is one of the most experienced, well-coached units that we've ever seen in FCS football. For them to have to run into that after all of the great games that they've put together, it was just, it, it, it's a behemoth. It it's is too rough. tough. It was too it, tough. Way too tough. It was tough for McDowell. It was tough for everybody. The game plan was great. And, and, and even for the brief stretch of loathing, I feel like the Montana fans started to warm up to us uh, down, down near the end. I wonder Someday. why. Someday. Uh, but you just look at it and, and, and you, just, you just shake your head. It's the Twitter reactions. It, it, it's it's what are you doing if this happens in front of you? And it's a, a massive meteor the size of the moon coming at Earth. It's like, what am I supposed to do? There's not much I'm supposed to do. And, and it, it, it was just one of those games where you were you were hoping that maybe you see something unexpected. Maybe you see, you see something that you weren't expecting. And if fans are leaving thinking, oh, that was a kind of a boring game. Yeah, it was. Because we all expected it. It was a boring game. Well, the it first was. half was good. The first the first half was good, was and then because of the tension and and because the yeah. gravity of the situation. Yeah. Other than that, stinkeroo. To, to get back to talking about this game, though, I, I think that one of the biggest things that killed there's two things that really killed Montana. The first one being not scoring on that first drive and getting stopped on fourth and goal. That was really that was really bad. Not bad in the sense that because like they couldn't execute on it but it gave South Dakota State a little bit of momentum I understand that they threw a pick on the the ensuing drive but it still gave South Dakota State momentum and the biggest thing that we said and I think a lot of people that were previewing this game said and I saw it a number of places there was even actually people who went and commented this Montana fans who actually commented this on the video you have to score early one if you're Montana and two you can't leave points on the board South Dakota State is too good of a football team that they're going to score on some drives with with a lot of ease, and they're going to be able to grind down the clock and run the clock down, which is exactly what happened in this game. So for them to not score in that fourth and short situation, left seven points on the board potentially, and then for them to kick a field goal uh, the next time that they were in the red zone was also a bit problematic. I'm not saying that they should have gone for it on fourth and medium or whatever it was, but this inability to finish on those drives, it pulled the air out of Montana early when it felt like they had some a little bit of juice to start this game. Fans know, people that really watch know, and you can feel that the sport at times, it, it feels like a living, breathing organism. Uh, it, you, if you get in that zone, you watch a play and you see some yellow on the field, you know what the flag is before it's even announced. That's if you're really locked in. If you're watching this Montana game, you're watching and you know exactly when it, they get stopped and exactly when it happens, oh my God, that was crucial. And it was early and it was crucial and that's going to impact us for the next three quarters. And it did. It will. Because you know the true fans know and they have that sense in the game, oh my God, we need some help now. Not, oh yeah, that was good and you still have some of those nerves because you don't know what they're going to do. No, it's, wow, I can't believe it. Jeez, we need to do some digging. And they had to do some digging, and, and South Dakota State just kept putting dirt in the hole. Mm. Hard, to do, how to, hard to get out of, uh, out of a hole when they keep scoring. 
the other thing for me, Sean, is the fact that Montana only mustered 47 yards yeah. rushing in this game. That that's that to me was like the clear if I if either of us didn't watch this football game and we just pulled up the box score and we said, guess which team won? Didn't show the score to anybody. Don't worry, Joe. Oh, we'll get accused of that today. It, we will get accused. <laughs> <We're> gonna... <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself now. Somebody's going to say we didn't watch. And uh, that we didn't really... play before. <laughs> there, uh, there's going to be some people that are going to uh, think of the opposite of you. But please. But but to this point, though, to only allow 47 yards rushing, for some reason, I, I it's really hard for some reason to find a, a really good box score and with like really good game stats because I can't find the number of sacks that Montana allowed to South Dakota State. I want to say it was at least three or four off the just the top of my head with the number of plays that I can recall where Clifton McDowell was, uh, you know, tackled behind the line of scrimmage. And, you know, they came after him. They, they pressured him. They really got after Clifton McDowell. So that rushing yard number was probably diminished by those eight to 10 yard losses. But still for them, and we witnessed this, it felt like they didn't have that same level of ease running the football that has set the tempo for them offensively against Furman and against North Dakota state. They ran the ball well in spurts, not consistently, but in spurts that set them up to win those games. They couldn't get any rhythm in this game, running the ball. And that, that to me, I think was, you know, it was really, really critical that South Dakota State played true to their identity of like, we're going to punch you in the mouth of the line of scrimmage. We're going to play hard at the line of scrimmage. And they couldn't pick anything up. And then they were forced to throw the ball way too much. And then that led to the sacks and that led to mistakes. Can I have you stop saying spurt just personally? That, that'd be great. Uh, I, I had a really vile counterpoint and I held back. <laughs> And I'm, I'm just not going to – no, I'm not, I like saying spurt. Spurt's a good word. What do you think of Gronowski this game? I thought his rushing touchdown was uh, was very ballsy. His 53 yards on the ground was good. Uh, they know what the offense is running through. It was running through the 5.4 yard per average uh, for Isaiah Davis yeah. on the ground. But I feel like if you haven't watched Gronowski, you kind of get to see a little bit of what he's been about uh, this season. Threw a touchdown, ran for one, was kind of mobile, threw a pick. Even though his, his his interceptions were super low this year, that was that was a bad pick. By the way, that, yeah, that was one of those ones where you're, you're watching the game and you verbally say out loud, "What are you uh, what doing? What were you looking at?" He I thought it was going to sway. One. Yeah, I thought it was all going to sway after that. It did not. South could. I, yeah, I thought Gronowski was fine. I thought he was fine. He was fine. That 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 you know he did what he needed to do. The defense is the MVP. If you're giving out a game ball, my yeah. game ball probably goes to the defense. I think that's really a testament, though, to how good South Dakota State was this year, that Gronowski, when he doesn't play his best game, when he when he throws a pick, he's a little bit off point. And then like the second pick that I mentioned that he almost threw on that uh, play action rollout where he threw the ball over the top to Yankee and he was late to throw it. So it led to two defenders you know, coming in contact uh, yes, with the ball yes. and knocking out of that the exact air. exact play, that could have been like, seven, should have been seven. Like that, like that's like a missed time play where he waited too long to throw that ball. I, it felt like he wasn't the Walter Payton Award winning Gronowski that we saw a lot this year and the one that we got to see in person against UNI. But that, what I'm saying here is, is the testament to why South Dakota State had such an advantage in this game is that when your best player is not having a good game, they could turn to two running backs, which is absurd to say. Multiple receivers, Hines, their tight end, and then they could just lean on their defense. I, I wonder if Gronowski played his prototypical game if they wouldn't have scored 30-plus points. I know that that's hyperbolic and very hypothetical, but I, I kind of wonder if that was in his bag. And again, just to reiterate, proves how good South Dakota State was. Yeah, the it, it truly was a team. It was without their best, without the quarterback having a stellar day. It just shows you top to bottom, they were the better team. And and Montana fans are going to be mad, and I know football fans are mad. I'm a cranky, mad football fan right now, currently. So if someone said this to me, I'd be pretty pissed. But you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be ashamed of that one. You had a great year. It was a great season. You just ran into a. a, a, a an unbelievable buzzsaw and and Gronowski 
it, it's hard not to give him the award. He's the quarterback of the undefeated program. Yeah. I thought the unsung heroes were the Anki twins, uh, maybe of this season. Two reliable wideouts that you could always go to. And, and, you know, they're not the stars of the team, but they're two dudes that are uh, just, they're, they're athletically great. And, and they came up when they needed to come up. If you needed to get the outside game going, they were always there. If South, that, that's the luxury of being South Dakota State this mm. year. They had a dynamic passing attack waiting the entire time. They did. They were better on the ground. They were better there. Just should show you the, the force that Montana had to go up against. Unfortunate. Unfortunate running into that team when you put it all on the, uh, on the line all season. Yeah. Very, uh, very, very um, unfortunate. And also the, you know, the Yankee twins uh, featured in a lot of Applebee's commercials uh, for, for, for whatever reason. Um, I don't mind it. Good for them. The Get your the, money the, while you can. <laughs> the face of South Dakota uh, Applebee's kind of just like a transitional thought here as we're kind of we're, we're closing this out. Last year, we talked about which we called our shot last year. We said that South Dakota State was going to repeat after immediately after the game like immediately yeah. after we said South Dakota State has the the best chance in our eyes to repeat assuming if most of these guys come back I think all these guys are out of eligibility not all of them but a lot of these guys are the Yankee twins I think are done I, I don't know for sure because it's impossible to keep up with the COVID shit Bach has Grant, to be done the, the, the Bach has field, to be done but ba all, Bach all got a mortgage payment yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a job lined up uh and <laughs> Kronowski's definitely uh, reached his limit, and, and Isaiah Davis definitely has, and a number of these offensive linemen. I, I would say that the future is definitely still bright for South Dakota State. I'm not going to go as far as to say right now, without having done enough digging, that South Dakota State will be the favorite to repeat. It doesn't hurt to put them into the conversation, but it seems like there's going to be a lot of spots that need to be filled, and I think that the field is going to be uh, a lot more opened up, and we're not going to end up with another – boring national championship game like we had this season i'm glad i'm glad you brought it up no oh, you got me in the fcs championship before you before you even uh called it i'll call it on myself uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up joe there is a lot of grown men leaving this south dakota state program and there's a lot of growing men different uh that are going to have to take their places it's going to be way more wide open you can't call a three-peat this time you can't call back yeah. to back this is eventual favorite wide open season next year anybody's ball game go out recruit nil transfer whatever you need to do get your team right it starts now it's wide open everyone knew before going into this last season that this was going to happen on today and that the, the, the us two were going to be sitting with their big faces yelling about it different different this year different the 25 year olds are gone all right <laughs> it's a whole new era Go uh go go get some of these boys some of that that Applebee's money man go, yeah, go get, get them the Applebee's these. money <laughs> we'll come up with Applebee's <laughs> build build the dynasty off of Applebee's I I think that that's, that's the real inspired. MVP at the end of the day that's inspired right there sure. <laughs> I think that that's the real MVP at the end of the day that we need to talk about I would love to know the breakdown of the amount of NIL money uh, that was coming from that local Applebee's because I don't think I've seen more advertisements with athletes than I have seen from that local South Dakota Applebee's. I, I, I mean, it has, to, it has to be bankrolling most of the roster. It has been, to I think that Applebee's has plenty of money because we've been to South Dakota and we know they like to drink. Where was and they why like didn't to we drink go? For wait, wait, cheap. Why didn't we go to that Applebee's? Why did it? We were such dickheads for not going to that Applebee's. We should have gone. What were we going to do? Film our own commercial there? Is that what no, you but it's a, it's a, it's a historical, it's an institution. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a local important establishment. It, it, it might not even exist. It could, you could I'm tell happy me that for it's the just... Jacks, Joe, I'm happy for the Jacks. You're not catching me in a, in a South Dakota Applebee's. You're not. Cause I can't, I have, bet you, I, I won't, I, I won't have a top dollar drink. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I bet that that place is popping off right now as we're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> By the oh, way, speaking it's party time. Oh yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Speaking of which, before we we wrap this up, because we're we're kind of we're we're done with our thoughts on this. I love the fact that 
uh, the ESPN crew and No Context College Football managed to find Dustin Helton and Chad in and the Chad goddamn and crowd. Brendan. Did Brendan they, have the blue beard? They just they, they they're so easy to find. The camera finds them every single time. I it's I, I love it. It's my favorite bit that we know those guys and that we've hung out with them and we've drank with them before. You know who they are? It makes me so happy. Here's the I mean, thing. they're bigger celebrities than we are. <laughs> We're a pretty front facing show. Joe, even more front facing than I, as he likes to, to mention in a lot of our off show meetings, regardless, you would think that so two people screwed. doing, doing the pod in both audio and video form would be, uh, the attention horse. No, it's those three. Oh, goons. you're calling them it's, attention horse? It's Chad <laughs> and Brandon <laughs> and, and Dustin Helton. They oh, need it more than me, anybody. Don't do them like they, that. Come they on. need it more than us. <laughs> they need it more than the Blue Bloods and Herder. Uh, all, the crew, all the crew, Jamie Williams, everybody. Those three, they love the limelight. Uh, shout out those guys, though. I'm so happy hey, for them. Shout it's out to happy for them. They're, uh, all, they're all very nice guys, very generous. They let us tailgate, and they feed and drink. And they, it's just yeah. – uh, it's nice to see in the FCS community some people that you know that are happy and not eternally miserable like Jody Leone and I. Uh, so seeing some joy is good every now and then. I also sent you a video um, of them on the uh, – yeah, I think it was on the local media – so, uh, pre pregame show or whatever sure and why they, wouldn't they be there's a camera they're gonna find it br- br- uh, they're so hammered in the video that they're in it's so so goddamn funny uh makes me so happy all right Sean, i think it's good enough to wrap us up on um off-season coverage will be coming make sure you're subscribed you don't miss out there is a lot for us to get to throughout the offseason at joe delio and at sanderson radio hit that sub button and we'll be back